Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design, Lecture 5, Working with Danton Plane, Coordinate Systems, and Datum Access. This lecture will introduce new tools that will allow the user to be able to create more complex objects. In many instances, the three main planes are not enough to properly create an object. Therefore, it is important to know how to create all the planes. We will go over various techniques to create dentum planes. To do so, we're going to open the file part lecture 5, part 1. In order to create a dentum plane, we're going to go to this icon, dentum plane. A new window will show. Over here, we could see all the different choices we have in order to create dentum planes. We'll go over some of the choices. Let's start with a distance. This choice would allow the user to create a plane given a particular distance from a plane or from a surface. Let's just start and select this particular surface. Notice that you could provide a distance. And let's see, 15. Once you have provided the distance, notice that you have a particular direction. If this direction is not the one that you want, you could simply reverse it. This choice would also allow you to have multiple planes. Notice that if we have in case one, however, if we have multiple planes, we could simply indicate the number of planes that you would like to have. Let's say three. And that's what we'll have. In order to show you some of the other choices, we're going to deactivate the planes we just created. Simply unclick, and let's go back to Danton Plane Icon. We're going to choose now an angle. This choice would allow you to create a plane that has a certain angle from a surface, and it goes through a specific line. First, we select the surface that we want to create the, uh, the plane away from. So let's see the surface, and then we go through this particular line. Now we could select the angle that we want to have, let's see, 45 degrees. Notice that now we have this new angle. Once again, we're going to deactivate the plane, so I can show you the other choices. To plane, and now we're going to select bicep. Bisector choice would allow you to create a plane right in the midpoint distance between two surfaces. This is very useful, especially when you do change that distance between the surfaces, the location of the plane will change with it. Let's see, we're going to create a plane between this surface and this surface. Notice that a plane is right in the middle. Let's go to the other choices. Deselect the plane, open the downtown plane choices, and select tangent. This choice would allow you to create a plane that is tangent to a surface at a particular direction. Let's choose the curved surface. And notice that the next provides a plane at a particular direction. If this is not the direction that you wish to have, simply select the other point of the surface through which you want the dantum plane to go through. Let's, I'm going to select the quadrant point to ensure that I select this point. In that way, the plane is now going to be perpendicular and touching that particular point. Let's go over another choice, deactivate the plane. Let's now go through uh, two lines. This choice would allow you to create a plane that intersects with two particular lines from your object. Say this and this. Notice that the plane is created. Please go through all the different choices and make sure that you're able to understand how to create the planes and when to use these particular planes. Another very important tool is how to create a dantum axis. These are very useful, especially when you need to do a rotation or a revolution. 
In order to access, simply go to the Tantum Plane arrow and select Tantum Access. If you select Infer, it simply is going to take any of the lines that you select and it's going to create an access on that particular line. The other choices are going to be, if you do intersection, you select two different planes, finds the intersection between the two planes, and creates an axis on that particular intersection. Let's see other choices. Let's choose now point and direction. So you, we want a axis that goes through this point. However, it's parallel to this particular direction. Notice the new axis is created. The other choices that we have are going to be, let's see, two points. So you create an axis between here and here. Make sure to go over the different techniques of how to create an axis and learn when to properly use them. Another very important tool when creating complex parts is to learn how to create Dantum coordinate systems. To do so, go to this icon, to the arrow, and select that coordinate systems. There are different techniques of how to create them. Let's just start with dynamic. The first thing that you need to indicate is the location where you want the origin of your coordinate system. Let's choose one point. And then you could change the orientation based on your requirements. You can rotate it. So make sure that you use the snapping features properly. You can move it up or down until you're satisfied with the position and its orientation. Click OK. Let's look into other choices. Once I get that to order system. Now let's simply go into origin. So if you choose a point. You choose the point of the axis. Let's see. Let's use the quadrant. Select here. And one for the y axis. Now it infers what the z axis is going to be perpendicular to that particular plane. And then it creates the plane. Let's go over some other choices. Let's now do three planes. So it selects coordinate system, you select three planes, finds the intersection between them, and that's where it will create the coordinate system. Please learn the different techniques of how to create a Darnton coordinate system. Make sure that when you use this tool, you do it wisely. You want to make sure to avoid unnecessary complexities into your object. At this moment, we'll go over an example and the application of new Danton planes and different techniques to create more complex parts. In order to do so, we're going to open the file, Lecture 5, Part 2. Notice that this object was created using a revolution. What we would like to do is create a plane in the upper part of this object, create a sketch on that plane, and then extrude it. Let's just start by creating the Danton plane. I'm going to create the Danton plane. And we're going to select it at a distance. We're going to select the surface. And the distance that we want at this moment is zero. The next step is to create a sketch that is in that particular Danton plate that we just created. So we're going to go to the sketch. And we're going to select on a plane. And we're going to select that particular plane. Make sure that the z-axis is perpendicular going up from that particular plane. We're going to click OK and notice that the plot is now rotating. What we want is to create a wedge that goes from the inner circle to the outer circle. Since this surface is already created, we want to take advantage of it and we're going to project them into the sketch that we are using currently. To do so, go to the Direct Sketch toolbar and select Project Curve icon. You select the surfaces, so outer circle, inner circle, click OK. Notice that they become blue. That means that we're not created in the sketch, but they were projected from another surface into the sketch. 
To see where they come from, we're going to simply rotate the part. And notice that it shows us that this curve corresponds to the projection of this surface, and this curve corresponds to the projection of that surface. To go back into the sketch orientation, we're simply going to right click and go into a orient view to the sketch. Now let's create the lines to do the wedge. I'm going to select the line, and I'm going to select the quadrant, this point. Let me just create a line a little bit longer. I'm going to do the same process over here. Now since I only want to have the wedge, I'm going to trim away the surfaces that I do not need. I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim this section this section and the section above. Let's now make sure that we make this sketch fully constrained. Notice that we do not need to add the radius of this and this curve since they are projected. This symbol indicates they are projected. If you do try to do a dimensioning, notice what is the warning that is going to give us. It's going to tell us that it's going to be over-constrained. So we're going to simply remove that. Let's try some other constraints. We need to provide the size of the lines. So we're going to go point to point from this particular point to this to provide a size for it. And we're going to make both of the lines equal length. So we're going to make them equal length. Let's now add an angular direction for this about this point. And let's do the same thing for the other line. It is still needs five constraints. So let's go around to make sure that it has coincident constraints within all the curves. Let's go like this. If it's over constraint, simply undo. And let's continue with coincidence. Notice now that the graph is fully constrained. Once we are done, we're going to finish the sketch. Let's put it in an isometric view so that we could do the extrusion. Let's now learn the different techniques to create an extrusion of this wedge using the surfaces of this solid. Let's go to extrude, select the region, By default, the direction is going to be upwards, so let's switch it so that we can go downwards. We have already done it with values, so let's try some of the other techniques. Let's go until next. Notice that in this case, NX looks for the next available surface, and it will stop the extrusion at that particular point. Make sure that you use the proper Boolean technique, depending on what the ultimate goal of your extrusion is. And let's hit OK. Let's go over some other techniques. Deactivate the extrusion. And let's try it again. Extrusion. We're going to select the region. Switch the direction. Now what we're going to try it is until selected. At this moment, you could select the surface that you want the extrusion to stop at. So let's try the surface. And notice that the extrusion is going to stop at that particular surface. Once again, make sure that you use the proper Boolean technique. In this case, we have Unite. Let's try it. Subtract. Hit OK. And now this is the extrusion that we have. Let's go over all the techniques. Deactivate the last extrusion. Let's try it again. 
select the region, change the direction. Now let's go until extended. Until extended allows you to create to select another surface. So it's quite similar until selected. The only difference has to be with the distances between the original sketch and the surface that you want to have. However, since our original sketch has the same dimension as the end of the surface, the two techniques in this problem are going to be exactly the same. So make sure that when you are creating your objects, you try both of the, the choices to see what works best on your object. So now let's try to unite. Let's go OK to see how it looks. Let's go over the last choice. Undo this and go extrusion, the region, switch, and let's go until through all. This is usually very good when you have subtraction to make sure that you remove all the material that you want from the particular solid that you have. See it okay? And notice that every single material that was in the path of the vector was removed. This is the end of lecture 5, working with Dantum planes, coordinate systems, and Dantum axis. Please make sure to complete all the required quizzes, review the material given in the PowerPoint and in chapter 5 from your textbook, and be ready to start class assignments.